Hello everyone, this is Yoan and welcome back to my channel. So glad that you are here with me today. In this episode, I would love to share this really charming crossbody bag project with you. The finished measurement of this bag is approximately 10 inches wide by 9.5 inches tall and 3 inches deep. This bag comes with a recessed zipper closure and then two internal slip pockets. This is a pretty simple bag to make with two jelly roll strips and a little bit of accent fabric. If you've already got some experience in bag making, I'm pretty sure you can make this bag rather quickly. This bag has an adjustable strap so you can change the length the way you want it to. Just a fun little bag, really wearable. You can use it for errands or for um, casual dates or casual gatherings, something like that. Now, if you've never installed recessed zipper before, don't let that scare you. It's quite easy actually, it's pretty straightforward. So I did my best to demonstrate in the video to make it um, hopefully easy for you to get a hang of. You can also use different kind of closure. Perhaps you can do magnetic snap closure instead, or you can also add flap and put the snap at the front. As usual, I've got timestamps in the comment section below. So in case you come back and you need to look at certain part of the video, simply click to the timestamps. It will take you directly to that particular part. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. Prepare two jelly roll strips or the two and a half inch strips. Lay them right side together and then sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then press towards one side. Now lay your fabric straight on the cutting mat. And then we're going to trim off the selvage ends. Measure 12 and a half inch and then cut. And then you want to make two more of these. And for the last piece, I like to cut from the opposite end since it's going to get a little curly in the center. So you should end up with a little bit of fabric left over here. So you can either toast this or keep it in your scrap bin for your scrap quilting. All right, so here we got three jelly roll fabric panels. So we will use two of these for the front exterior and one of these for the back exterior. Lay out two of the jelly roll panels just like that and then go ahead and sew them together with quarter inch of seam allowance. And then take the lower panel, this should be cut from fabric C. And then sew that together with the jelly roll fabric with quarter inch of seam allowance. For the back exterior, we're going to use the last piece of the jelly roll panel and fabric C for the lower panel. Now sew them right side together with quarter inch of seam allowance. Alright, so here I've got my front and back exterior pieces ready to go. Now you can go ahead and interface each piece with your favorite interfacing. For this project, I used the fusible woven interfacing that I applied first and then followed with the fusible fleece that I cut half an inch shorter to reduce the bulk around the top. To create the boxy corners, draw one and a half inch square on both bottom corners of the exterior pieces and then cut. So here I've got my front and back exterior pieces ready to go and I actually quilted this a little bit. I simply run straight stitches next to the seam line. Lay your front and back exterior pieces right side together. Secure them in place with some sewing clips and then go ahead and sew along the sides and the bottom with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, you want to open up the corner, match the seams, secure them in place with a sewing clip and then go ahead and sew with half an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so you should end up with something like this. Now turn this piece inside out. It's looking great. Now we're going to set this aside and work on the lining and the recessed zipper. From the lining fabric, you will need to cut two identical rectangles. Now let's prepare the zipper. So you will need an all-purpose zipper. 
measuring at least 12 inches long. So when it comes to the length of the zipper, it's always referred to the length of the zipper T from the zipper start to the zipper stop. Now my zipper here is 12 inches long technically, however the overall length of the zipper is 13 and a half inch. So what we're gonna do, we're going to trim this zipper to measure exactly 12 inches long from one end to another. So here I've already trimmed my zipper. So the overall length of this zipper is exactly 12 inches now. You may want to hand sew both ends of the zipper just to make sure that you won't lose your zipper pull accidentally and to make it easier to install the zipper tabs. I didn't sew the end of the zipper since I didn't trim off the metal zipper stop. Alright, now let's work on the zipper tabs. Cut two rectangles measuring 3 by 2 inches. Fold the end of the rectangle widthwise about half an inch and then press and then you want to fold the opposite end as well half an inch and then press all right so you should end up with something like this now fold this in half right side together so you want to meet the folded edges together and make sure they are aligned and then go ahead and sew both side edges with quarter inch of seam allowance Now turn your zipper tab inside out, poke the corners, make them nice and flat, and then go ahead and press this with your iron. Here I've got both of my zipper tabs ready to go. Now we're going to attach this to both ends of the zipper. So insert the end of your zipper into the zipper tab pocket and do the same with the other one. Since the zipper tabs are a tad bigger than the width of the zipper, you want to make sure that you center the position of the zipper. Now you can go ahead and pop a pin to secure them in place. And then go ahead and sew all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now for this side here, I go very careful because remember I've got that metal zipper stop so I kind of like move that a little bit out of the way just so that my needle will not have to run through it because metal with metal in sewing machine is not a great idea. Alright, so here I've already attached both zipper tabs. Now we're going to prepare the zipper panels. So you want to cut two rectangles and then you want to fold and press them the same way as you would when you make the straps for your bag. First you want to fold the end of the rectangle half an inch and then press and then do the same with the other side. Now fold your rectangle in half widthwise and then press and then fold the edges towards the center fold and then press and then fold everything in half and then press. So the measurements of your zipper panels should be exactly 9 inch long by 1 inch wide. Now I'm going to use my basting tape to base the zipper panel to the zipper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut two strips for each side and each strip is about 9 inch long or the same length as the zipper panel. Place the basting tape on the edge of the zipper tape starting from the start of the zipper right by the zipper tab just like shown here. Now take the other basting tape and place that on the reverse side. The same thing you want to start from the zipper start. Now peel the top layer off and then you want to do the same with the reverse side. Now we're going to take the zipper panel. So what we're going to do, we're going to insert the zipper tape to this uh, zipper panel. So the zipper panel should be sort of hugging the zipper tape. So you want to position this starting from the edge where the zipper pull is. So right now I'm not sticking the basting tape just yet. So what I do, I want to make sure that the zipper panel is positioned nicely. So you want to have about an eighth of an inch gap between the zipper tape with the edges of your zipper panel. 
and you want to make sure also that the reverse side is also well positioned all right once you're happy with how your zipper panel looks go ahead and seal the sandwich so you want to make sure that your basting tape is sticking to your zipper panel you can also pop a couple of pins just to make sure that everything is extra secure and then we're gonna go ahead and sew starting from the side to the lower edges and then back to the side do not sew the upper edges so we're gonna sew with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance and you want to start sewing an eighth of an inch down from the edge and as you can see here I'm using my walking foot I highly recommend that it will make your life much easier since walking foot works like a charm when sewing multiple layers of fabric if you are a quilter I'm pretty sure you already have one in your stash now if you don't have one this is the one tool that I beg you to have one especially if you love making bags all right so you should end up with something like this now let's do the same for the other piece of the zipper panel Alright, so this is how the zipper should look like after you've sewn the zipper panels. Now we're gonna work on the slip pockets. So lay your pocket pieces right side together and then go ahead and sew the top and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open and then turn your pocket piece inside out. Then you want to press this again and top stitch along the edges. Lay the pocket piece on the right side of your lining piece, about 3.5 inch away from the top, and then mark the center point with your fabric marker. So I simply follow the fold line crease. Secure them in place with a couple of pins and then go ahead and sew along the center and the bottom as well. Alright, so here I've got my pockets already sewn. Don't worry about the sides here, it's gonna get stitched anyway with the side seams. Next, we're gonna attach the zipper to the lining. Now, we need to find the center point of the zipper panel. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold the zipper panel in half, so aligning the edges of the zipper panel. And then with your fabric marker, go ahead and mark the center fold on both sides. Now take your lining fabric and then measure one and a half inch down from the top right on the center and then mark that with your fabric marker. So this lining piece here is the back side of my lining while the other lining piece, the one with the pockets, will be the front side of my lining. Now lay the zipper on top of the lining right side up so you want to align the center fold of the zipper panel with the center point mark that you created. Now secure them in place with some pins and then go ahead and sew along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so you should end up with something like this. Now we're going to sew the other side of the zipper panel to the front lining piece. Here I've already marked the one and a half inch point. So we're going to do pretty much the same as before. So I want to place the zipper panel on the right side of the lining, matching the center fold line of the zipper panel 
with the one and a half inch point mark. Secure them in place with some pins and then go ahead and sew along the edges with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so this is how your lining should look like after installing the zipper. Now we're gonna assemble the lining pretty much the same way as we did the exterior pieces. The only difference is we've got the zipper tabs in between the lining. So you wanna move the zipper tab out of the way so you will be able to pin and then sew the lining. And of course you wanna do the corners the same way. So here I've already pinned the lining together. Next we're gonna sew the sides and the bottom however at the bottom we will leave about five inches of opening in order to turn this back inside out later and of course we're going to sew this with half an inch of seam allowance all right so here i've already sewn the lining and boxed the corners as well and here is the zipper Now let's work on the strap anchors. So you will need to cut a rectangle measuring 5 by 4 inches and then you're gonna do the usual folding and press. First you wanna fold this in half lengthwise and press and then fold the side edges towards the center fold and press and then fold everything in half again and press. So you should end up with a 1 inch wide strip. Now go ahead and sew along the edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And once you've done sewing, go ahead and cut this strip in half. So I'm going to take my ruler and measure 2 and a half inch and then cut. Alright, now we have two strap anchors. Next, we're going to attach the strap anchors to the back. So prepare two 1 inch D-rings. Insert the strap over the D-ring, just like that. And then you want to place this on the side seams and of course you want to center the position. Now secure this in place with a sewing clip and then you want to do the same with the other side. Now go ahead and stitch along the edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. Next we're going to work on the strap. Since I've already demonstrated this so many times, I'm not going to show you any more in this video. However, I will link a different video from which I demonstrated how to sew and install the adjustable strap. Now, if you've already made this kind of strap before, perhaps from my other tutorial, and if that strap happened to be in neutral tone or the color will go well with the bag that you're making right now, you can simply use that so you don't have to make a new strap all the time you make a new bag. That's one of the benefits of using strap with the swivel hook. Now we're gonna assemble the bag. So you wanna turn the exterior shell wrong side out and then turn the lining right side out. Now insert the lining into the exterior piece so you want to make sure that the front side of the lining is facing the front side of the exterior piece and vice versa. And of course the right side of your lining should be touching the right side of the exterior piece. Secure them in place with some sewing clips. I like to start by matching the side seams and then make my way around. And once you've secured everything, go ahead and sew all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, pull your lining out and then turn the back inside out through the opening hole. Press the edges of the back, make it nice and crisp. I like using my seam roll to do this job, it's just much easier. And then go ahead and top stitch along the edges. So you may top stitch this either with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance or quarter of an inch of seam allowance. 
whichever one's more comfortable for you. Once you've done top stitching, you want to pull your lining out, find the opening hole, and then fold the row edges in about half an inch, and then go ahead and sew along the edges. And once you've done that, you can tuck your lining back inside, and voila, your bag is pretty much done at this point. Now you can attach the strap and enjoy. And that's all I have for you today guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting project. Goodbye!